For more videos visit forthesakeofeducation.com All right guys, now we're gonna do these two problems together which says resolve each force acting on the Gasset plate into its X and Y components and express each force as a Cartesian vector and then determine the magnitude of the resultant forms uh, acting on the plate and its direction measure kind of clockwise from the positive X axis. So basically break down the forces, express them as Cartesian vectors add the map and get the resultant force in polar form. That's basically what I'm telling you to do. So we're going to start with F1. F1 is simply, you can tell just by looking at it, 900 newtons on the positive x directions and that's it. So it's 900i. Simple as that. F2 is equal to um, this component right here. Sorry, this component right here stops right here and the y component. So the x component is going to be 750 cosine of 45 degrees, angle given right here, plus because going on the positive y, 750 sine of 45 degrees cosine of 45 and sine of 45 are the same so you know these two are going to be the same I'm sorry this is I and this is J your uh, unit vectors for your Cartesian vector expression so when you calculate this you're going to get that this is 530.33 I plus 530.33 J for F2 F3, notice that it's going towards the origin, it's not emanating away. F3 is pretty simple to calculate. The X component will be this right here, and the Y component is going down. And you're giving the little uh, triangle relation. This is pretty uh, easy to use. In case you don't know, you will do it like this. Look, you do the 650, which is the magnitude of what will be the hypotenuse of this triangle which is a 5. So what you do is you're trying to calculate the x, which is this component right here. You know that the relation is something like this, right? But the magnitude of it is 650. So you do 650 times 4 because we're trying to get the x over the hypotenuse, which is 5i plus 650. And now you do times 3 because we're trying to get the y. Actually, it's not plus. It's minus because we're going down on the uh, y-axis times 3 over 5 that's how you calculate this and when you solve this you're gonna get that the first one is 520 i minus 390 j this is f3 so this is the solution for this problem now to get this problem we're gonna add them up and we're gonna get a Cartesian expression for the resultant force so when you add all the i's together and all the j's together you get 1950 that 33i plus 140 0.33 j this is the Cartesian expression for the resultant force notice 1950.33 is pretty big towards the x and it makes sense because all the forces are going that way and then you got a force going up and a force going down and a neutral force so in the y direction the more or less cancel out but on the x direction is going that way always try to look at your answer and make sure it makes sense this way you know why do I have such a high value for the X and such a, a low value for the Y let me look at it more or less makes sense always try to do that then your problems will uh, be right most of the time and then you gotta convert this into polar form to find the magnitude of the polar form you do 
the uh, you add the uh, you, you add the squares and you square root it, so it's 1950.33 square plus 140.33 square, all square rooted. So these two values, square them, add them up, square rooted, and you get 1955.4 for the magnitude. And if you want to find the angle that it forms with the uh, x, you do the tangent inverse of 140.33 over 1950.33. And you're going to get that the angle is very small, 4.12 degrees. So the final answer is going to look something like this. FR is equal 1955.4 at an angle of 4.12 degrees. And this is the answer for the second problem. So final answer.